Hello and welcome to Talking Dogs on a Monday. As you can see, I'm back. We uh, we let Barry call out of his cage. He's, he's off roaming the streets as we speak, looking for someone to interview or to get a vox pop off. Meanwhile, I'm joined as always by the exile dub, Tommy Lyons, and of course, a bit of glamour, myself, and we have Sarah Kinsella also with us from Boyle Sports. Sarah, great to see you. Pretty in pink on this Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. 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 Wow, Tuesday. It means that the Derby action hasn't been... Uh, well, has, it's been 72 hours, basically. Um, Sarah, I think it's safe to say this Derby is just turning into a bit of a belter. It is, yeah. Um, I was just looking there before we came on, actually, because Damien Lonigan put up the heat betting for the third round, so we can touch on that in a bit. But it's fierce exciting. Like, But I know last year I was I was so confident on Born Warrior from the first round onwards after I seen him. And the year previous, I was confident on Susie Sapphire. And the year previous, that Pist- or Pistan obviously didn't win. But, you know, you were, I always pinned my hopes on one dog. And I haven't gotten it in this year's derby yet. I actually don't know who's going to win. Tell no one, right? I think Kulamani Hoffa has a great chance. Okay? <laughs> yeah, right. of course, yeah. Tommy Lyons, Tommy Lyons, a great derby. Let's get stuck into it, I suppose. Yeah, it is a great derby. It's... um. But you know what? We lost a couple of dogs last weekend, or um, that I'm not surprised at. Derby is kind of um. I tell you what, the the at one time they had to move the derby from five two five to five fifty. They literally have to move it to five seven five next if it's going to turn into a kind of a five two five or a five two five type derby. And away and gone all the time. Uh the times are getting so fast now that that it's it's uh as we've, we've talked about in the past you don't really have to be as much of a stare now as you had to be one time and that is just a little bit of a concern actually to be honest about the way it's going but um, the, the quality is, where, is just ridiculous I mean the, the figures this, in terms this of the is where I, I, I disagree with you somewhat because I thought the I thought in the second round the track was back a bit from where it has been for the last two to three years and we did see a lot of strong running greyhounds coming through to win it, it is back a bit but you Look at the first round. Look at the times. Look at the number of dogs that did sub twenty nine fifty, sub twenty nine forty, sub twenty nine thirty. I mean that crazy figures in terms of the numbers they were doing those times. And if the ba- if the track was back for one round, so what? Because it's going to be fast again, probably for most of the rest of it. Yes, the, the weather's you know has been has been strange and it's been difficult to kind of keep a consistency and things. So it's, it's difficult for management of tracks. But um, we know you know as well as I do that a bar a bar a deluge on the, the night of the derby fine. It's going to be it's going to be about getting out there in front and 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 win the derby off the front. That's the way it it's is. been for quite some time. It is, and as a result of that, the betting sort of backs it up. You know, you look at a few of the dogs at the top of the betting, and, and they are the ones with the early speed. Um, although if you look at the top 10, 12 of the betting, th- there's there's few of them what you'd call absolute away and gone merchants. You know, Kulavani Hoffa is clearly the obvious one of the case, but the remainder of them are all fairly strong runners. Um, you know, one or two little exceptions, but we'll, we'll get into them in a few minutes. Uh, Tommy, let's kick it off proceedings on Friday night, the first of the 16 second round heats. Uh, New in Port was a good winner, uh, picking up Capitan Garfio. Back in third was Milridge Levy. Gay time Nemo going out, the English Derby champion. Just didn't for happen for him in this competition. We, we've said it before, as a huge, huge ask to go through an English Derby and then into an Irish Derby. And this year they were so close, just wasn't meant to be for Gay time Nemo, but his kennel companion, New in port running well to score. Yeah, I ran very well actually and just drove drove on from the third bend. Captain Garfield, who wouldn't be the strongest stairs, is actually running extremely well in the derby. But uh it was it was a good you know, you know, the, the winner ran a good um ran a good line throughout the line he should he should uh, should be running to be honest about it. And I thought he drove drove on well from the third bend. Um you know, he obviously has to step up a little bit, but 29, you know, it's funny when we're looking at dogs and saying 29.53, ah, he needs to step up a nice bit, but that's the reality of the of this derby. It's that it's, it's that good. It, like It's probably um, more his racing style that he needs to step up and rather than the clocks. Like 29.53 would get you away with it if you're doing 17 seconds to the third bend, but he's doing 17.22 and he had to work for it. And, you know, we know in hindsight, he's a very tricky draw in the second round. He does, but he but he 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 runs the third, yeah the third round. He runs he runs a good I'll line though for a white dog. He runs his line, and and ran it well. I felt the other night. So I mean that's probably what well that and obviously the, obviously the strength he has in it over the trip. But Captain Garfield again like he's doing he's doing what twenty nine sixty seven is in, in defeat. That's a fair run too for a dog that we thought you know looked like a a pure five to five dog at one time. Sarah and Nader, we move on. 
No, no, move on. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, to he too, you can you can talk about Clona Duke. I think this was a display of pure bravery and strength rather than brilliance from Clona Duke. We know exactly how good he is when he gets on the bunny, but on this occasion had to really drive into that opening corner after a missed start, force his way to the front, and and then had to really dig in to contain Mr. Chelm, um, the artist formerly known as Kildare, to the third bend, who is again showing massive back straight pace. It's only a matter of time before he produces a massive run. And back in third was Romeo Magico, who is certainly not going to the corner like he can. I mean, he's got a better draw next time out, but he's still there. Uh, but Clona Duke is the one to take the headline, Sarah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, look, he's an excellent dog. We've all seen that, especially when he won in, in Waterford and what he was doing in Toaster, uh, the Conan and Kirby. It was only a matter of time before he starts. Uh, well, I suppose he hasn't blown us away just yet, but I really, really like this dog. What is he, about 10 or 12 to 1 in the outright? I wouldn't put anyone off back in him. I only said it the other day when I was talking to Shelvin Park on Saturday that he's a real competition dog. He's a dog that you can rely on, a bit like what Romeo Magico was perhaps last year. I'm not as 100% confident in him anymore, like Perel Badger. He puts his heart and soul into every race, but there are dogs that are more, that are better than him this year. In saying that, I do hope he makes the final, but I can't see him winning it. He just doesn't have that ping at the traps anymore there's something missing with Romeo Magico that could be perhaps age or maybe it's just something that I'm not catching with him but I think Clona Duke has Derby Dog written all over him and as I did mention to you I haven't pinged my hopes on one dog yet but he's certainly in my top five that's for sure he was excellent 29.55 he was well, odds on four to six I think he was so there was no big surprise there he did what he was expected to do great to see Kildare and what they're doing with Mr. Shell I should call him and what they're doing with him, Peter Cronin, it's 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 some achievement to get him back and, and perform into that level. He can creep through as well, like a competition dog. I was sad to see Anna Bailey go out. I think a lot of that dog. Um, but yeah, look, it was an excellent heat. Um, no real surprises, no real shocks, I suppose. And on to next week. But Clona Duke is the one, one I'd be sticking my my anti-post bet on at the moment, Ian. The one I feel for in the race is Clona Rocco. He actually looked like he was going to get around the corner in front and again do a big run. He's been in flying form, but just wasn't meant to be. Uh, Tommy, we'll come to you briefly in this contest because Mr. Chelm is again an eye catcher. He's in four the next night. We know exactly where he wants to be out in the middle, three or four. He has to be a player going forward if he steps forward. Yeah, he needs to step forward early and that's where it's going to catch him. His pace down the back is absolutely ridiculous. Even, even more so in the previous round. Um, we saw it, but you know, this was a hot heat, and what he was doing was phenomenal, to be honest about it. He's um all his pace is there. I just don't know that he'll get it together enough in the early stages to be a player. And I think it might it could get him knocked out if you know along the way, unless it he has, does step it, up a little bit. It has bit. to happen soon, as you say. It has to happen it's soon. The, that's the problem. It, this is so hot. Like Clona Duke, does he have the early pace to, to win a derby? I'm not so sure. Um he has the ability, geez, I've no he, doubt about that. Cer he certainly has the early. It's just the case of whether he uh, comes out of traps. Trapping has often been his issue. Yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not entirely convinced that even if he broke level with a lot of a lot of the dog the the, the smarter early pacers that are left in the derby that he'd matched him. Now I know he'd matched him on, on overall ability. Robio Magico has been behind for nearly a year. He kind of hasn't been hasn't been at his you know, very, very best. Maybe I just, it's only a length, but geez, what a smashing race he ran to qualify. Like he's just, a, he's been a brilliant dog. He gives it all every time. Uh, you, I'm like you, Ian, I thought Connor Rock was a little bit unlucky. You're also probably unlucky to be in a heat like that where you've got a, a former English derby winner, you've got, <laughs> you've got Kildare, you've got a, a, a juvenile derby winner, Connor Duke. You're a bit unlucky because actually Deadly Showtime ran a cracking race the previous week. Anna Bailey had been in good form. Connor Rocco looked like he was a dog that might be stepping up uh, to get to this sort of level. So, I mean, for a second round, that was a red hot heat. Yeah, we'll let Sarah start off in heat three because I think Bobslay Dream is uh, close to her heart. Uh, Sarah, she's definitely quirky. There's no question about it, but by God, she can run. Well met, again, showed tremendous early speed. And, and that's, he's one of the few that really can score to that third bend. 17-12 was up there with the fastest runs on Friday night. In fact, it was the fastest run on Friday night, the third bend, joint fastest run. He set a searing gallop. He's three or four lengths clear. A Bobslay Dream cut him down you know, like uh, like me going through the grass outside with the lawnmower. It was just phenomenal. Um, yeah, when, she got, when, she, when she got to the front, when she got to the front, it was, I've done enough. And, and there's no question, she idles, shall we say. But like, there's nothing, you know, the, there's nothing bad about her. She just felt she'd done enough. You got the sense that if the other dog had come at her, she'd have gone again. She'd have gone again. 
Yeah, I love this bitch. I, I love bitches in general, as we all know, but there is something special about this lady. Like, you can always nearly rely on her that she's going to run her race, even when she misses the kick, because she is so inconsistent at the boxes. And she's nearly better off missing her kick. It's like what we see yeah. in Raha Mofo at the weekend. She pings out, and then she's the meat and the sandwich, you know? So sometimes it actually benefits them when they don't break. Um, She's very clever. She's a very, very clever tracker, and I love that about her. I mean, she's got enough titles under her belt now. Like, you know, she ran about 29, 36. What she done? Well, Met had run absolutely brilliant the week previous, and I didn't expect that run from him whatsoever. And that Garfini Blaze as well, running over 750, going from six bands back, at 20 to one or something he was to win that heat the other night. That's an incredible performance from him to qualify as well. Um, but yeah, what there's not, not, not more you can say about Bob Slay Dream. I just, I love her. She's consistent. She's versatile. She's reliable. You can run out of superlatives for her. Um, I can definitely see her going very, very far in the competition. I just, it's like when she was running in the Dundalk International as well. Like, just, just you can't fully um, rely on her to absolutely ping from the traps. No, I have seen her do it. I think she done it in the first or second round of the Derby last year. She absolutely bolted out of the traps from trap three, I think it was. But yeah, I love her. She's She ticks all the boxes for me and she's definitely probably that mark. And I think we have a top bitch mark and she could certainly win that. Yeah, Tommy, she's going to be very hard to knock out, isn't she? Yeah, it's her nature. I always just go back to her her, her ledger run. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, and, 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 and there were yeah. similarities. And there were similarities because well met. Well met was doing 29.50 this time last year. 29.50s this time last year. Well met is in superb form. And like as you said, it just cut through the like cut down four or five lengths in a matter of strides. It was it was actually you know because the depth of the, the depth of the, the the heat might be there or or maybe more so the way the heat broke up in 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 actually running that there was plenty of space for her to run into. So it might have looked as impressive in some ways because you're running down only one greyhound. But by God, she did it in a matter of strides. Like she's phenomenally fast, yeah. phenomenally yeah. fast. Yeah, she's, she's a bit of a freak, no question about it. Well met. Can certainly go around or two. He, he'll need to be on his toes next night. He's drawn a bit further off the fence. He's got good trackers both inside and outside him. Um, he hasn't been rewarded for his services, I'm afraid. Uh, on to Heat 4. Uh, this was a case of Dale Roduke and Bally McWalt um, dominating the market. But sort of as we got towards race time, you, you sort of did keep... You kept an eye on the price of Clonroe Sydney with a view that McNeil and Cathunda said we're not going to be able to go to the corner. Clonroe Sydney, while he's short of early speed, Tommy, there's no question he has a massive engine. And after a flying start, he did get across one and two. Yes, he didn't have the early speed to contain them, but he turned close to the pace thereafter, was just simply too strong. Barry McWalt crabbed a little bit around the last two bends for me, didn't look all that comfortable. No, but the the winner's a the winner's a fair performer. Like to think to think the run he did last week, coming first run from the champion uh, on racing Kilkenny, and this this even though as you say not the early pace to hold him at the first bend, this is a step forward. And if you've only had six runs and you're doing that in the second round of a derby, it's a fair sign of what dog you are. Yes, you know you you know reality is you'll have to find another ten spots probably on the on the on the early sections to to really. Play a part if you get if you if you were lucky enough to get as far as the derby final or semi final, um, like McNeil is a strong dog, a dog that went deep in toaster. Um, I think it's a fair performance. Like Clon- Clonroe Sydney, I'll be honest about it. Bally McWalt, I don't know, showed early, remember the, the night he showed a real early pace and just held on, barely held on from was it the sober glory, you know, in the champion place? No, from Optic Chico, Optic Chico, was it? Yeah, yeah, Optic Chico, yeah, final Chico. champion place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he did. He did twenty nine thirty nine that night. Do you know what I mean? Like the other yeah, evening, yeah. he's do, he's he's doing twenty nine eighty two off the front. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. for me, for me, I, I'm hoping they've given him a couple of weeks, weeks, but it just didn't lo- look all that comfortable around the last two bends. It's just a, a slight concern for me. I'd be worried if I had backed him anti post, and he was one of my anti post selections in the price wide in the racing post, and I'm I'm not sure I'd be overly confident in that one. I definitely wouldn't. Dean. I don't think you can come from where he is at the moment to 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 find your form all of a sudden. And uh, I fear that that it's just got deeper next week. It's just getting deeper for the for the weekend. I, I fear that he I fear for his chance of qualifying. To be honest. Yeah, uh, Sarah, you're probably too young to remember the Toffee Crisp bad. Are you there, Sydney? Well, that's what the case was off the second <laughs> bed because Clan Rusk Sydney was arriving with a rush. There's no question he has the engine. He certainly does. I must admit, actually, I don't know too much about Matthew Hart. It was the first time I met him um, the other night. 
uh, only a young fella. Um, very, very impressive as as Tommy touched on. Like he doesn't have that much racing, and to be able to do that in the first and second round of the Derby is now unbeaten. And I think in the first round he came from last place, um, or near enough to it anyway. Um, I think that was the race Crypto Punk was in, and I don't know what happened to him off the first bend. They subsequently changed the seeding, and then he was obviously a non-runner then after that. But no, a very exciting dog. Um, McNeil, as we all know, was a powerhouse. Bally McWald, as same as you, Ian, he was one of my um, anti-post selections, but I'm just not 100% confident, confident in him at this point after that performance. But he is relatively young. I think he's only... He's still only a puppy, is he? Or has he just gone two? He's, he's just a June. He's June. But he only has the 13 starts. So, like, he's... Yeah, yeah. yeah and no the same mileage. thing he said about, about Clan Roosk, Sydney. Like, I think they'll just... Dogs like this, yes, they're excellent and they're fast, but I think they they always get found out against the more experienced dogs as the as the competition progresses. So while it's brilliant what they're doing now, I'd want to see him doing that now when he's in against Clona Duke or Romeo Magico, and that's when you really see how, with their true potential, you know. But look, another good winner. Can't take anything away from him. Um, no real shocks in it, to be honest. Uh, Dale Dale Road Duke. Uh, rocks off, rocks off as Benny and Katunda said. No real shocks there. They were big prices, so yeah, it was a good result. But yeah, I would be. Uh, I totally agree with you. I'd be worried about Bally McWald's performance. Hope he's okay. On to eight five, Scaglietti was imperious once again. Twenty nine, twenty six. Tommy, I'll go to you because he reminds me of our dog from last year, the no. Vincenzo. Um, <laughs> something very, very, very similar about him. He just has a lovely way about him. Once he gets on the bunny, once he's dominating, uh, I think he's up there with the fastest of them in the whole competition. He's a proper greyhound, the Scaglietti. This breaks my heart that he reminds me so much of Vincenzo <laughs> and so what happened to Vincenzo last year. Like Vincenzo was never quite right and yet he qualified for a semi-final of a derby, couldn't take his place in it. This fellow, thank God, he looks like he's touch wood, he's he's solid and he's not there's nothing there's nothing that's preventing him from producing his best at the moment. I actually think it was a fabulous heat because I thought Bally Mac or Bally Himmick and Rex ran a superb race trying to chase him down because when Skagdetti's on the front, they're not much going to catch him. Yeah. You know, the, he he yeah. he's his to me his issue will be the, the, the three or four or five yards into the first bend. And that's when when he gets a real test there, that's when we'll find out how good Skaggy is. That's 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 the that's the test that found out good maestro. He got a lovely glorious heat in the opening round, got loose, did a big run. And the other night in against better Greyhounds, you know, he had the start to clear them, but Burj Khalifa got up his inside into the corner and yeah. that's not Derby winning form. Burj Khalifa is an eighty six pound dog. If he's up in your inside, you're not going to get around the bend. The um yeah, that, that that's the, that was the issue exactly. Good Maestro had done a big time the previous round. Skagdietti is a better greyhound at the moment. And it was there was a great professionalism to it because Ballyhimkin Rex is a fair yardstick. I mean, I mean, he really I was actually quite impressed with the runner up as well. I really was because I felt he really pushed hard against the dog that was obviously doing a very fast time. It's just those five yards when he gets tested that maybe he's improving. Maybe he's improving, or maybe he has them now, or he's got or he's gonna get them over the next few weeks because he is definitely improving. Um, I'll just I'll, it'll, it'll hurt me it'll go to my core if he wins the derby that, that, I, that I got that he does without me having backed him so well, anyway I'd wish them well 12-12 <laughs> <laughs> uh, 17-12 and 12-14 that's a lovely it's a lovely mm. it's a lovely match you know it means he's going to the third bend but he's also coming from the third bend um, Sarah there's a lot to like about Scaglietti yeah, I absolutely adore him. I tipped him to win the champion stakes with that Trinity Junior one, and he got KO'd at the first bend, I think it was, and my heart was in my mouth. I was like, oh, no. And he came out of a grand, as we've seen, 29, 26, two, night, two weeks in a row. Um, I absolutely love him. When he's out and gone, he's something special to watch. Um, I'm not sure of how he runs when he's to work hard and to dig deep when there's dogs in front of him. Um, I, He's kind of yet to approve me on that front, but... That Ballyhimmick and Rex as well. He's some machine and Burj Khalifa, the, the gamble that we seen in him in one of the rounds in Toaster. I think he was backed in one of the heats at like 20 to 1 or something and he won. So he's a dark horse too and he's a dog that yeah, you could see dog. creep through Um, because he has obviously that massive big engine down the back straight and that. that. But I absolutely adore Scaglietti. Um, he's a dog that for me will just keep having to go out front. He has to perform out front. That's where we see his best work. Like most dogs, obviously. But I can't see him coming from behind or anything like that. You know, I think he has to be on the bunny. But um, not to take anything away from him whatsoever. Sad to see good maestro. I think that dog has a massive future. He absolutely blew me away in the first round. Um, for Patrick O'Foyle, he done 
and I wasn't expecting it. He came in under the radar. I didn't really give him that much of a look when I was going through the first round heats and he snuck through. And when I seen him perform, I was like, maybe I'll put him down as my new anti-post pick. And then he goes out of the derby the week after. So I'm kind of glad I didn't, but one to keep an eye on for the future, for sure. Uh, heat six and um, Glengar Martha was 28 to one return, Sarah. And, you know, if you didn't know the dog she was taking on, you'd say fast away, always led, comfortable, Fine, fine victory, but it was more about the dog she was in front of. Daladi Da missed the kick, edge to the inside. Drew nice one in a big race in second spot. And of course, Balabola Ed crashing out. Um, Dengar Martha, firstly, very impressive. Very, very impressive. Again, I actually don't know um, a whole lot about this bitch. Um, Pat Buckley, again, another one that I never would have given much thought to when I was going through the heats, but an excellent performance. I mean, I think she just held on, didn't she, by a length? Like, she, was she fading or was it was Droopy's nice one just absolutely flying? Well, she yeah. was main she was maintaining, is what I would have said, rather than fading. It's just Droopy's nice yeah. was so strong, I think. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, twenty eight to one, twenty nine forty eight. I'd say that's a career best now for her. So look, you could have that argument of what Tommy was touching on the start and all these fast times, like it. I I would have to agree with him, but I also agree with you when you're saying dogs are coming from behind. It is a bit of a tricky one. But there are a terrible lot of fast times being done in Shelburne Park. Um, yeah, well, in fairness to this bitch, like she had 28.47 around end of Scorthy, which I would say is probably in the top five fastest times ever done around there. She was a finalist in the um, the Future Champion and Michael Fortune Memorial on race down there. She's always looked very, very talented. Uh, trapping has been the issue. She generally wants to be close to the fence. Three is about as far as she wants to be out. But when she hits it, she can run. There's no question about that. She has some stunning form on her card. So the 29.48 is not a surprise to me by any shape or, or, you know, and and that's not the surprising element. I suppose the surprising element is that she did lead up the likes of the laddie dad, Ruby's nice one, and banned the bullet head. Yeah. Um, I, when I was doing the draw the other night, when, when I uh, drew the laddie dad and trap one, and you mentioned that he's obviously a dog that uh, wants the rails very much so. So I can see him put in a a, a, bit, a bigger performance than he did on that night. But even when he performed in the first round on 29.43, like he's he's a special greyhound. And we again, like he he's, doesn't have that much racing on his card. So he's one to, to add to the notebooks for the future. But look, it was sad to see Balnebol Ed go out where really was because I think he was a stronger dog this year. Uh, for Pat Buckley, just the way he was performing. I know, like in the Dundalk International, everyone was arguing, oh, he should have won and this, but I mean, he had a pretty good one that bet him in Raha Mofo, so I wouldn't take that much away from him. And then he came out in the first round and blasted his rivals and done 29 34. I was just, I'm, I'm, out of all the ones to have gone out, he, he's the one I'm most sad about because I think he would have added something special to this derby. Um, because I just I loved him so much and I was devastated when he got knocked out last year and this year I was like he's gonna go far he looks a stronger dog so yeah I feel for the connections um because the, he is he is a very very talented great that troop is nice one as well she's real consistent like she, you, you can always kind of it's, she's a bit like Bob's Lay Dream and you can kind of rely on her for her consistency and she's versatile and stuff like that maybe it's the bitches that you can rely on because there's there's so many talented ladies in the country for the last few years really but this the last two years in particular but yeah she's a fantastic little bit she probably probably is not as fast as she used to be but certainly you can rely on her to put in a, a true performance but yeah nothing to take away from Glen Carmartha a very very good performance yeah, Drew's nice one was danced every dance. Of course, the finalist last year. Balnabola, Ed, Tommy. Uh, Shelburne's loss will be Nottingham's game. He's off the select stakes. It'll be very hard to contain him around Nottingham, you'd imagine. Yeah, I would. I did say last week I thought that the likes of Balnabola Ed can't win a derby for the very same reasons that I that I that I was talking about earlier on. This this air the early pace that's in it. And it did kind of catch him out because the two bits of trouble he got, I don't think were enough to knock out a dog of his quality. Um he, the laddie that you know, missed a kick and wanted inside badly. That is a concern. You and I are both on him, anti post, and we're hoping. I, I was, oh, I was encouraged by his run. I thought he ran a big race to yeah, qualify. Yeah, but, but, but obviously, if if you if 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 Sarah doesn't start it out and keep drawing in one, we're in a bit of trouble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, um, listen, listen, though, we can we can start something out there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but do you remember when to... I was doing the draw and you kept saying, uh, who do brown, who do brown? Oh, he needs trap one, he needs trap one. I don't think he ever won from trap one then. So yeah. maybe maybe he doesn't need trap one as much as we think he does. Oh, he does. Oh, Sarah, Sarah, <laughs> you, you you stick to that with Hoodoo Brown, and we keep trap one for the laddie da if you don't mind. Um, Balling ball Ed is a shame he's out because he's so good. Droopy's nice one ran an unbelievable race in the first round, 
and she is just back to her best. Glengar Marta, the, the issue with Glengar Marta is she's not consistent in the trap. She doesn't, she can do that break. She has done it in the past. It wasn't a massive surprise. Um, and actually, normally in her earlier races, you would have said she's more of a strong runner than she is a, an early pacer. And oftentimes she was flying home. And um, But when she got in the bunny, she was going to do a big run. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, you know, but I just don't know. I, you know, when I look at her next week, how do you I price her next week? Out. Yeah, how do you price her next yeah, week? She's I, either a, I would, either a three to one chance next week, or she's a twenty to one chance next week. Yeah. See, I I would I would err on the side of her not breaking like that next week. That's just yeah. just from looking at her looking at her form. But like she has plenty of ability. Just I think that the Drewby's nice one's in great form. The laddie that has a potential improver with so little um, racing done. We'll race to the next tee, Tommy, because uh, it was a muddling affair, shall we say. It was a muddling affair before it happened. It was a muddling affair when it happened. Um, this was all about the early speed came from Carrigmore Logan and Hello Mom. But in behind them, Stories Casio had always poised and the strong runners came to the fore. It was Stories Casio that got first run at them. 365, I thought, ran a huge race. She was a bit of a drifter ahead of the race. There was just talk of maybe a, a little web problem. Sporty Big Man stayed on strongly for third. But, you know, while they're all running well, there's no Derby champion here. Oh, I don't think so. I mean, like Stories Clash is, is a cracking dog, very capable sort. Again, the lack of early paces is, is always going to be the issue. Uh, spied, a, spied a gap up along the inside, going to the third bend, and actually drove it extremely well. And not only just to get up, up inside the, the one dog at the, at the third bend, but actually to hold the line against the one in front um, and hardly left the rails. Hardly left the rails. 3365 is so strong. So strong and ran a cracking race as well, but yeah, not not a derby champion in it, but a very likable. The front two are very likable in that race. Uh, Sarah, is there a derby champion in Heat Eight where Jatara took off? He got a bit better again. He wasn't great in the opening round in victory. He was better in Heat Eight. Um, I was sort of looking at them at boxes, and you're going, well, "What's going to emerge? What's going to emerge?" And it took a few strides, and then all of a sudden, Jatara took off, got a couple of lengths into the opening corner, and it was all very comfortable thereafter for a moment or two around the last two bends. Drupi's bro looked like he was closing the gap, but Jatara sort of not kicked again off the final bend, but once straightening up, he, he sort of maintained his gallop to the line. He wins in twenty nine sixty. I genuinely think there's probably a half second left in this fellow because he just doesn't seem to be all that sort of massively comfortable around Shelburne Park yet. He has yet to reproduce the cork form we saw, but there's no question he's very talented. Not quite a Susie Sapphire yet, his half sister, but you know, just don't rule him out. No, he's very, very talented. Um, we have to remember, like he's still only a baby. He's not two until September, so he's probably a, a little bit green, maybe, or maybe I shouldn't say that because all McKenna's dogs are are well, like tuned in. But the way he's just running, I think there's a lot more to come from him. Like twenty eight thirty three, done his first ever race in Cork, and everyone kind of was looking at him, going, "Jace, this is a, a you know a massive, massive potential star," and he still could be. Um, twenty nine sixty nine is an excellent time to be doing in the Derby, uh, for for a pup. So let's not forget that either. Like you know, he's well bred. Ruby Sydney, Dreadstream, Lynx. Um, he's definitely one to keep an eye on because obviously there's only what how many see wide seeds left? Eight, is it? Nine. Nine. So if he 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 has a chance in that way, there's not that many wide seeds left. So yeah, I look look. I was impressed by him. I missed Friday night. You see, I I was in Galway and I hate missing. I like to see the dogs in the flesh that's how I judge I you can watch the videos till the cows come home but I like to be there um, and when I seen him running in the first round I did write him down as a potential one for each way punters in the outright he done I think he done nearly 30 seconds in the first round so he has improved that little bit and I think he'll keep improving and um, don't know too much about the qualifiers I'll be honest with these bro and seven beach but um, I think Droopy's bro was got a little bit of trouble at the first bend and ran on strong. So that was a, that was quite encouraging as well. But yeah, not much to add more. I don't know what you think about that, Tommy. Yeah, from what we've seen of Droopy's bro, Tommy, I think he is one of those runners that will be need to be near the fence to produce his best because he probably doesn't have the early speed to clear the decent ones. But well, he, he, he probably does have enough early speed to hold them into a corner. Um, Seven Beach is going to need to find his trapping boots because he's very much a front runner. He was his first ever time in trap one. I would have loved to have seen him draw four or five the next round and see what he's capable of. But again, he's drawn on the inside. Yeah, moved off again. Um, to, things we didn't touch on actually there, but obviously CryptoPunk was an on under there last year's Derby mm -hmm. play Consol winner. Consol Consolation winner. Consol sorry, Consolation winner. And then we also Bally McFinn, which was a real loss after his yeah. first round performance. He yeah. Derby runner up last week. He's got a huge loss he was to, to the competition. Um, He looked like he was in superb form, I thought, last week. I was actually lucky that I was so busy with Galway all week that I didn't actually back him. 
uh, to win it outright because I thought 16 to 1 after round one was huge. Kevin and I were talking about it here with Barry last week. Um, it's just what a shame, what a shame to lose dogs of that quality and not getting a chance, obviously, to show to, to to race whatever about getting in a little bit of trouble in a race and getting beaten. I mean, to not be able to uh, to contest the second round was very unfortunate. Yeah, indeed. We'll move on to Saturday night's action. Uh, but we've still a fair bit of ground to cover and we don't have an awful long time to cover it. Um, Heat 9, Tommy, sober glory. It's hard not to be impressed by this. Greyhound didn't happen for him sort of in the early yards the other evening. One or two of them charged boxes. It was a staggered start. Rio Beach missed the kick. Dramano Dano certainly didn't. He got loose at the head of affairs for the O'Briens. He had some good form down your way. Uh, but sober glory. I thought showed great pace and determination into the bend to get the better of hold Freddie on the inside once doing so it was only a matter of time before he went to the front he has a massive engine there's no question about it a hugely talented greyhound we'll still find out in, in, in future rounds whether he really has the early speed to, to to get involved early enough but certainly most impressive in, in both the first and second round he's so so strong Ah, he's a he's a terrifically strong dog just, just a concern obviously in his lack of early pace he obviously showed an inclination to go to the inside um, and you know, with two dogs inside of him, he was kind of fortunate enough that he had that ability to clear the clear the top two. Um, Dramana Dano ran ran his heart out really. Raiho Beach actually ran a superb race to qualify because I thought the clip that he got at the first bend should have left most dogs, you know, with no chance whatsoever of even qualifying. Yes, he'd beaten eleven lengths and whatever else, but um, he actually ran. It's funny if you need a little bit of look along the way. To win a derby, maybe Raiho Beach got it the other night. That was um, that was the type of that was the type of trouble that, that should knock you out of most out of most competitions. So my uh, my my, my concern is out. my concern is when when it does get very competitive and he's on the outside of four or five fast greyhounds, well, he's going to struggle to get that corner. And he's he's definitely sort of he didn't drive the corner the other night, even though he's in a bad position. He certainly didn't drive it. And it's amazing too with greyhounds, isn't it? Too you know it's that that third round in Tralee where he got a bit of trouble on the outside. He looked like a specialist early pacer in his first two rounds. Looked like a dog with phenomenal early dash. And then got the trouble, was I think, with the third round. And um, just yeah, has 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 not driven it as much since. Yes, he needs to fly out of boxes, which he isn't doing. Um, he's got the pace to be a to, to be a derby finalist. Um, but it's just it's you're not going to get get away with much along the way here. Not with the not with the level of competition and the depth yeah. of competition at the moment. So you're right. I'd have concerns about him. Um but the, the ability is definitely there. Right, our sober glory is a, just a really, really solid greyhound at an at a, at extremely high class too, let's be honest about it. But just worry again, draw and a little bit of luck is going to be needed early. Yeah, on to Heat 10 where it was one for the bitches. Sarah, undulation. Um, <laughs> I have to tell you, she went up well. Thought she'd lost her chance. I would have knocked her out of the competition at the second bend. She absolutely stormed on. This lady is, you know, like she's clearly loving life at present. She is, yeah. Uh, she's pretty special. I think it was um was it the puppy oaks or the puppy derby that she ran in and she caught my eye back in November, I think it was. I think she reached um it was the national puppy, she reached the semi-final stage and she had caught my caught my eye back then. She won one of the heats in 2820 or something like that. And then she was missing kicks and she wasn't consistent at the traps, and then she obviously had her stint and toaster where she ran some excellent races over there. She was absolutely blasting from traps. So to come back to Shelburne Park to the different traps and all that sort of stuff, I know she was third in the first round. She had to dig deep to qualify. And then to do that against the Boyle Sports Champion Stakes winner was pretty special. She was epic. 29.53. Uh, the lads were there, where Wayne McCarthy and all them um, getting their presentation. They were, they were absolutely Trilled or sorry, that was the other one I think. But um, that's undisputed, yeah. Yeah, they showed up. With the, yeah, I keep getting mixed up with those two. But uh, Brendan matches is bit yeah. Look, she's brilliant. She's well bred, as we all know, with the Pistano and lock on lock. So I think it was a really good performance. I had tipped Trinity Junior um in that race, so I was a little bit disappointed on the tipping front. But look, she was brilliant. Uh, she'll have to keep doing that throughout the derby though because like I said she has been a bit inconsistent at the traps but I mean she still has youth on her side really doesn't she so and that Hanover Phantom as well what a dog like Declan McDonough I know we've touched on him before and on some of these talking dogs things when he was running 750 and I think Tommy you were really keen on him in that competition that uh, Kinturk Road um, won and you were kind of thinking putting him up as a, as a big selection price but he's a dog that I'm telling you he flies home 
He's real consistent. Yeah, he's not going to win the Derby or anything, but isn't he a great servant for the lads? Like, he just keeps uh, tipping away and getting through. But yeah, undulation, absolutely brilliant. He's only beaten a length Shall of neck and over Phantom. Go ahead, Tommy. Shall I be flattered that she's mixing me up with Barry Call? Yeah, oh, similar hairline, <laughs> similar hairline. Um, no, it was, it was Barry. No, Barry was fancy in Hanover Phantom big time in the corner. Oh, right. Good, yeah. I know he's in fairness, in fairness to him, he's been riding that one ever since. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Tr- Tracy Junior has to get a mention here. He did everything right. Seventeen eleven to the third bend. Uh, he was been pressed hard by B- Bally Macaron, who was desperately lucky to go out. But Tracy Junior. You'd like to think maybe he was given an easy week or something with it with the long road ahead because he didn't he didn't get home and we know he does get home, Tommy. Yeah, that, that's this is very interesting. This is the most interesting aspect of that of that heat, if you ask me. Trinity Junior, like I mean, two strides. I know he's second, but two strides and he's fourth and, and out of the competition. Like that's how close it was. I just wonder. It has me thinking. I mean, he's been he's been deadly consistent over the last number of weeks. I mean, even an easy week wouldn't it shouldn't make him go back. He's had you know he's had plenty of running for for quite some time now, and he's been running at the top of his game, and that just concerned me. Bally Mac run, I was I, I felt she, after watching her win the Shelley Fenley in 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 Cork, and she was at the top of her game. I'm I'm just really really disappointed for her because I thought she was capable of going maybe even to a Derby semi final that sort of level. If she, if, she, nice. if she if she waits her ta- if he waits and challenges on the inside of Trinity Junior, she may she mightn't even she might she might have won the heat, but mind never might even not qualify. You know what I mean? I do think I do think just because of just because of her somewhat exposed nature that there'll be there'll be a weekend along in the next three or four where she comes up against what we would class as probably better dogs and beat them and we'll back her at a price and she'll win because I think she's in she's actually slightly improved on what she was and she's been around a while. Uh, Hanover Phantom is just a really solid dog. Has kind of has a heart broken a little bit because he's never really kind of reached the heights that he looked like he would early on because he has he, he has serious ability. It's Trinity just Junior, it's, though, it's, it's, it gets back to the the lack of early speed. He just doesn't have the early speed to match the proper four Ben Greyhounds around Shelburne Park. Yeah, I just but but the, but the, the whole thing is about the question mark about Trinity Junior. What way do you look at him for next week? It's a real puzzle, a real yeah. puzzle. Yeah. Um, what wasn't a real puzzle was Clon Bryan Treaty. Sarah, this fellow, the Kirby Memorial champion, he's been he's been frustrating to follow in recent times. He'd been missing the kick and he didn't get a flyer the other night, but you know, it was a man against boys. Like he just absolutely ran clear away from them once getting loose on the outside. Most impressive. We know he was more than capable of it. He can go even faster, but he's gonna have to find his trapping boots. He is for sure, yeah. Look, it was it was very hard to oppose him during the night when I was tipping up this race. I was like, I can't not tip him because I wasn't really blown away by his performance the week previous against Bally McFinn. Um, as Tommy touched on, it's sad to see him go out. But yeah, I was delighted to see Clon Bryan Treaty perform the way he did the other night because I did have a few question marks over him. And I know that's terrible to say because he's an excellent greyhound. We all seen that, especially when he obviously got to the Project Stakes final and he was winning the Conan and Kirby. And he's an excellent, talented greyhound. On 29.57 the other night, and even early July, he had he came to Shelburne Park. Um, I think he had gotten had had breaks since the Project Stakes, then came to Shelburne Park, done about 29.45 or 29.50 or whatever it was. And I said to myself, there's our derby dog. That's him. I was really, really impressed. Then he came out a week later and was beaten by Anna Bailey, I think it was. So then again, coming out in the first round of the Derby, not really doing it. But then last week, again, so I, I keep falling in uh, love with him. I'm like, yeah, he's got to do it. And I'm like, oh, no, that performance wasn't Derby standard. And then I'm like, yeah, I'm back again. So I don't know. I'm up and down with the dog. I do love him. I mean, he's like 85,000 odd won in prize money already. The dog is is excellent. There's no doubt about that. But would I be back in a Manti post I don't know is is the is the true answer, but um again, look another wide seat that I think will just keep plugging through the derby. Do you know what I mean? So, twenty nine fifty seven, an excellent performance. I think. Not sure what you guys thought. No, it was an excellent performance, but but again, even in victory, it sort of left you scratching your head, going. He's yeah. going to need to find that 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 slick start. Uh, we must mention Scotty Scheffler and John Big Ten, who both qualified. Scotty Scheffler, like he's in over in November twenty one. He, he's a he's a baby, um, and he really is coming forward week on week. Um, nice dog going forward. You'd imagine he'd get knocked out of the Derby shortly enough, and then they could have a bit of sport with him in the juvenile Derby. John Big Ten is owned by young Evan McAuliffe, and you know what a spin they've had out of this fellow. Like he said, he's won thirteen times, eight seconds, nine thirds. He's always in the frame. Uh, Tommy, just a line of Clumbrine Treaty. 
um if you if you want to be positive you just say that that you know when he was in Limerick he missed a kick a couple of times in the early rounds and it has only really excelled towards the end of the competition but the problem is you can get away with a little bit more in in that company a little bit more not much um he what did he do down to third bending what was the section on? A seventeen twenty, I think. Seventeen fourteen. Seventeen fourteen. And that's after giving them probably like that's after throwing away two lengths of traps. Yeah. Well see, like I think he's got as much early pace as anything in the competition. He yeah. is when he hits it, he is phenomenal. So mm-hmm. look at I have something on him to win the derby and it's a win only and that's fine that's probably the best way to back it with him because he's either going to win the derby or you're not going to get to a final because if he, yeah. if he gets to a final you have every chance and you have a bit of value if he doesn't um, you're not you're not wasting a lot if he just misses the kick and finds trouble the next night the problem is of course that the, the, the depth of quality is there now that he he's going to he's going to struggle if he misses like that but if the night he breaks it the night he breaks from traps he's going to do like sec- sections he mightn't he, might, he mightn't do a 29-10 but he, he'll do sections that would be utterly phenomenal yeah, no and um, yeah, it's just it's just it must be frustrating for connections for connections too. Even though he's already won a, a Kirby, um, that they know it's there, and it's just yeah. getting it out of him. So, the thing yeah. is, he's in the third round of a derby and he has his draw. So you know what I mean. There's every chance we'll be talking about him ahead of the quarterfinals. And um, let's take a look at Heat Twelve because this was a razor, razor sharp heat. Um, undisputed, Sarah. We'll go to you again. Undisputed is the bitch that you, you mentioned, owned by Wayne McCarthy, Paul Prendergast. Incidentally, their sister. Succession had a litter of pups only two nights ago. I was talking to Hugh McGrath the night, and he was saying to me, Yeah, he said she currently has two pups on the ground. There's more to come. Well, it was five, three dogs, and two bitches. Succession by Maliki. So, uh, nice. the best of luck with them. But uh, Succession was a talented uh, member of the litter. They're all talented. So, who knows? Uh, her, her her progeny could, could keep winning. Um, down through the lines on lock and lock because she's only had a couple of litter of pups herself so she's going to have a bright future but Undisputed was I thought one of the best winners of the night <clears throat> this was arguably the hottest competition or hottest contest of the competition thus far and a flying start at 3.43 a 17 20 she had to really drive the opening corner to get around another holiday which is something I, I was worried about her not doing in the Oaks it's back. She, uh, again, like her sister Undulation, she is loving life and pack you'll foil. Will McCarthy, Paul Prendergast with a tremendous winner. I thought another holiday lost, nothing in defeat. And so too the other Kobe, who I thought would have gone out of the competition off the second bend. And he dug in to qualify in third. And as a result, the likes of Papa de Yoro, Optic Chico and Stefan's Rock have gone out. Three good dogs gone out, but three fast dogs have gone through. Yeah, this was an excellent heat. Um, no surprise, I tipped up another favourite in another holiday. Um, I, I wasn't disappointed with him. I on, I only actually arrived to Shelburne Park from Galway for this race and I ran in and she's a beautiful uh, blue b- bitch, this undisputed. I keep mixing up that undulation, but um, I thought she was absolutely electric from traps. Uh, 29.48. She looked like she was going faster, Ian, um, when you were looking at it. Do you know what I mean? Especially against another holiday who we know who had done the fastest section of the week previous to the third band in 17.01, which is outstanding. Um, so I thought that was, I agree with what you said at the start, they're one of the best winners of the night. Is that 8-1 to one her true price? It, it would have been, yeah. Yeah, it certainly would have been. Yeah. In other words, sometimes these prices on the GRI website don't be, don't be right sometimes. But yeah, that was an unbelievable performance and I, I take nothing away from him because I did tip up on the holiday but I wasn't disappointed with him whatsoever Um, he's still there I just think I, I was on TG Cahar on Saturday right and out of, out of all the dogs and all the trainers in the country to mention I just absolutely love Michael J. O'Donovan and that's everyone knows that I always mention him but to, to have the treble that he did in the opening round with those three dogs, okay, yeah, he had a, a second, a third, and a winner on, on at the weekend, just gone. That man is an outstanding trainer. And those three dogs, like especially Kulavani Hoffa, I know I'm going off topic here, sorry, but Kulavani Hoffa, the way he performed, having not ran since the Derby last year, the man is just a genius. And just keep an eye on, he, on those three dogs. We touched on Roy Hopi. Uh, beach earlier on you mentioned that he needs that bit of luck with the wide seed and I agree but another holiday I'm telling you that dog I wouldn't be surprised if he got to the derby final I'm not going to say he's going to win it but I just love him I really do but yeah sorry to go off topic there and I was uh, disappointed to see Optic Chico because it was one of Damien Lonigan's anti-post picks there for uh, Robert Gleeson so yeah but look the when is the draw for the Michael Fortune Memorial plate being done actually I'm sure it'll be Wednesday um 
want to keep well, that they, eye well, on. Well, they do the rest of the cards. Yeah, no question about Optic Chico Dog with huge, huge pace and ability. But Tommy, if you don't have the early speed, you're going to struggle. And the three that went through do have the early speed. Another holiday was in one the other night. I think we all believe he's better than the middle. I wouldn't be too concerned about Trap 5 the next night. Um, For who? For Another holiday. I'm sorry. Um, no, because a lot of his form in the past was out, was was kind of I felt was out there in in memory right, without looking at his form off. But I tell you, this is this is um this is an issue. This heat was an issue if you got a strong running dog, because you got you really really had all the hallmark of a uh, something. Some of these early patients have to get knocked out, and they yeah. didn't. They <laughs> Do you know didn't. what I mean? Yeah. Is it, and you see the bump that the bump the winner <laughs> got, and the bump the runner up got. And the and like the runner up ran a superb race to chase hard, having yeah, got that bump. I how, think how I think I think the, I think the fact that Optic Chico went off two to one close second favorite in a race where he was probably going to be fourth at best at the opening corner, maybe fifth, suggests what everyone else thought that this was a race that could fall apart for the early Pacers. It's exa- that's exactly it. Like like um, Pap Pap Doro was was like a seven to one chance. That'll tell you the, the quality of the heat overall. Optic Chico is a strong runner. But like you've got one dispute with another holiday and the other Kobe through. All dangerous in any heat they turn up in. Sarah, it'd be no surprise if all three of these got to the semi finals. No, not at all. Yeah. Um i the other Kobe um is a dog a bit like the one I was touching on on I clone uh clone Grand treaty. I keep falling in and love with this dog, and every time I go against him, he wins or he impresses me or does something. So yeah, definitely I wouldn't be surprised when they made it that far. But um... Well he'll be he'll be five he'll be about five to one the next night. And that's when I back the other Kobe because he is capable of a ping. Like of he all the him. dogs left the Derby, there's probably four that are capable of doing a, a sub three forty and he's amongst them. Um Listen, yeah, you could go skin. You could go skin waiting for him to do it, but he's definitely capable of doing it. Um, on to heat thirteen. Um, Tommy Ballymac Marino, your your uh, chief of the Ballymac Marino fan club, always have been since the very very first days of his career. And after a couple of runs where you sort of just you're just waiting for him to come back to form, um, I decided the other evening that yeah. He's on the right side of Drew. He's got it. Tonight's the night. And after a stride, I was pretty comfortable. And and you know what? drew has got it. Okay, he's had a, there's a big gap in his career, but but like he's phenomenally fast early. Um, when you when he does it right. So for Bally Marino to be able to edge right, maybe towards about trap three, and hold drew has got it all the way early. That was quite impressive. Um, just I just like to see the consistency in Bally Mac Marino now because the talent is definitely there. But you'd like you have to like what he did off the last bend and the way he drives off the last bend. Actually, he tends to gain length at that point in his races. Um, Music Glideway, who won a heat uh, last week, not in a very fast time, if I remember rightly. Yeah, right he, came from he did come from last in fairness. Yeah, he ran a really good. It was, race. A, it was it was a late heat and everything in the night. I think it was on the night anyway. So he actually ran a, a, an improved race. Actually, Music Glideway and he's a very strong dog. So for Bally Mac Marino to be kicking clear. Yes, Music Glide Away might have been catching him a, bit, a little bit, but to be kicking clear of the remainder of the pack, I thought it was a really good race. It wasn't there, like, you know, even though there wasn't huge depth in it in some way, um, the fact that Drupal's got it was in the race and was going to be something of a blocker or, or potentially a blocker to Valley Mac Marino, it, it enhanced the, the, the performance for my, in, in my mind at least. So um, he's definitely a player going forward. I think we talked before at the start of it, Ian. That, that Liam Dowling didn't really have dogs in the top of the near the top of the market, which was quite remarkable. Mm. Um, he still has players. They're not the leading fancy, but he still has serious players in the derby. Yeah, I think I think there's no question. Sarah certainly won't be ruling out Liam Dowling. Isn't that right? Like what the man has achieved over the last number of years has been nothing short of spectacular. Yeah, and they're a very professional outfit. Like when they arrive, their dogs look superb. Um, the lads are great to deal with. You know, like I, I've I've presented enough trophies to them now down through the years. They're a really, really professional outfit, and that's what I love about them. Um, their dogs always run incredible without winning, you know, getting through each round and stuff like that. But Valley Mac Marino was very good. Like, look, again, when I was looking at this heat la- last week, and uh, it was hard not to tip them, you know, but like that you're tipping them going, you're not 100% sure. It was a bit like Clam Brian Treaty as well. Like, you can't not tip them. So I think he ran a true race. Um, I'd agree with what Tommy said about him, though, Um. But I just think he doesn't have a whole lot of running on his card, really. Um, so I think he's a dog that will very, very much so impress and, dare I say, maybe even a stronger dog next year. 
Yeah, um, Drupi's got it. Um, just want to tip on him. I just get the impression that this fellow was rushed back. I thought it was more encouraging the other night. Just wouldn't be surprised if there's a run coming. Um, just just keep him in the mind. You know, keep him in the mind. Barry Call has been sweeting this fella for a while. He tipped him up at 33s and he, he's still fingers crossed. Like he, he insisted on tipping him the other night against Bally Mac Marino. And yeah, listen, I put him back in his place and all. But, but you know, it's just one of those things. Keep in mind. Uh, music Glide Away is running very strongly. He's a bit like Clam Brian Trade. He's just not hitting the lids. There's no yeah. question there's the engine there, Tommy. Um, he, he, um, he actually starred over five seven five the longer run to the corner. That's not that's not a surprise. No, and um, it's not because 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 some dogs just like that do do need it. He actually had um, I thought they were I thought it was a great thing to do with him uh, to to prep him for the derby was to get him give him the few runs and just give the bit of confidence. He was showing terrific pace. I mean, he was beating yeah. Ballymac run and beating her well and um. Yeah, look, he's going to have to sharpen up to win a derby, but it definitely was a step in the right direction. He's kind of dangerous in terms of quali- qualifying in any heat. If you're if you're making a mistake up front, the likes of him is coming in behind you, you might be in a little bit of trouble just to qualify. So, um, again, Pat and Foyle's dogs continue. He has, all, he has all the pace. He just just that first five strides. He just doesn't get going quickly enough. Mm. Um, onto heat fourteen, a young you know a young pretender to the throne here. Uh, Kulavani Hoffa. He's now eleven to four favorite with Boyle Sports. And uh, again, in hindsight, having seen the draw, I don't think I'd like to be laying him at eleven to four, three to one. To be honest, um, this was just professional as you like. Uh, Bocco's Crystal was seen as the main danger. She had run very well in the opening round, tying up a little bit after coming out. Of, or she's still coming out of season. Mm-hmm. The other night was definitely the bounce factor, Tommy. I think, I think you may have touched upon it last week, um, talking to Barry and Kevin that you know she may come back for that run before coming forward again. Um, but cool of any Hoffa. Not much more to say. Twenty nine thirty one at the time it was the fastest time of the night. Seventeen oh one, clearly the fastest time of the derby thus far to the third bend. This night last year he did a sixteen eighty something or other. So you know the track was probably that ten fifteen back, but Kulavani Hoffi was just imperious. Yeah, yeah, it won't matter a jot to connections if he wins a derby. But what a shame for 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 the likes of us three that we don't see him more often. He is just ridiculous. Yeah, I, I I I remember your reaction to seeing him last year in the flesh. I think you were up for maybe the third or second round or something like that, and you just saw him in the flesh. I think you may have watched it on my shoulder. And after the race, you went, "Wow!" What about he's the dog? Just, he... <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, no, Sarah. You could have sat going steady with some greyhound too. You're falling in love with these bloody things all the time. I know, yeah. I have to get myself a boyfriend soon. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The um, Kuda Valley half of those is just, wow. What do you say? I mean, if, if that had flashed up 28.91, I wouldn't have been surprised. 29.31 was actually was a little bit of a surprise that it wasn't quicker, but maybe the track, who knows with the tracks these days at the moment. And like they're not doing 3.30s at all. Three, doing 3.48 is nearly phenomenal these days. Um, so I don't know what the story is in terms of what what clock can be done or what is capable of be do- or being done at the moment. Uh, I don't really mind that though, because when you see it to the eye visually, that's just stunning. I mean, Bacos Crystal, who had run very well the previous round, and yes, what you say is right about her coming out of the season and potentially going back in and strengthening up again. Um, she a very shrewd judge uh, said to me he was going back in her each way before for the round second round so. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he he was right. Just the way she showed the pace she showed out of traps the previous week. Yeah, but like Cool of Annie Hoffa blew the opposition away. Absolutely blew them away, and is a joy to watch. I mean, it was just funny when it was a dog at twenty nine thirty something in two weeks before the Derby, and then you look at odds check, and all you see is blue for Cool of Annie Hoffa. Mm-hmm. You're going to go but they're not spotting what's happening in Shelburne Park. What is this yeah. dog doing? You know that's that'll tell you what what they knew they knew exactly what was happening at home and that there was everything was there and like it's 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 going to be a remarkable training achievement to win a derby on the prep and yet he looks like he's like he looks absolutely rock solid and everything they've done with him has there's been no effect if you know what I mean he's just he's the same as he was at his best last year arguably even better. Um, I don't know. I, I don't. The, what's the manner, not to like the, about the, the dog? The manner, that he's that the, good. the manner in which he put 
they put the bitch the sword down the back straight. I, I know she, you know, she's come out of season and whatnot, but like you'd imagine she'd only start to tie up from the third bend. You know, perhaps the reason why she tied up was because she was trying to keep him down the back straight, Sarah. Like he does a 351, so he shouldn't be doing a 1701. <laughs> from the second bend to the third bend, he absolutely took off. Like it wasn't just the early speed he showed, it was unbelievable down the back straight. Yeah, I mean, he won by nine lengths. The dog is an absolute bloody machine. He's 78 pounds of absolute beauty. I absolutely adore this dog, but I just cannot back him at the price. I can't. I can't do it to myself. He's too short at this stage. It's only the third round, lads. We can get carried away sometimes, but it's you, very you know, hard you, not you, to you, get carried you know, away with a dog like this. You know, six weeks ago, he was 14 to 1, yeah? Yeah, but sure, I... I very rarely back that early. I like to see them run. And it's very hard to back a dog, remember, that hasn't ran in like 10 months. Do you know what I mean? You're thinking well, to yourself. Well, I did. <laughs> well, yeah, and you could be right. And I hope I hope you win because maybe you could buy everyone a drink then. But anyway, um, he won by Jesus. nine lengths. He done everything right. I mean, he's one to four to win his heat now um, on Saturday night. And he faces Buck Gold Crystal yet again. But I think it'll be the same result. Um, he's in against Callaway Masters, Captain Garfield, Scotty Scheffler and Seven Beach. I think it's just a walk in the park. Again, he's got a, a I done the draw for that. And when I when I seen the race come out, I was like, Jesus, you've given him a handy enough heat, Sarah. Like, do you know what I mean? So keep it up, Sarah. No, That's okay. That's okay, Sarah. Keep it up. No disrespect to the others, of course. And I am always conscious of that when we're doing these things that you're, you're you're running down other people's dogs, and that's not the case at all. <laughs> well, no, no. So in anyone case, watching no, this, in that case, in that case, you could just blame um, you can blame Demo because, as far as I know, he's about four on. You know what I mean? Like it's, I I think it's safe to say he's been given a handy heat if he's four to nine or sorry, two oh, to no, nine or he, one to four. Or something. I have it here in front of me. He's one to four. The next best is Buckles Chris at a five to one. So it's some gap, lads. Like so, look, the dog is. An absolute powerhouse but again what Michael O'Donovan has done to get him back to this level after you know being so unlucky last year and and I just I am I'm just blown away by him I think he's an outstanding man not many trainers can do that let's be honest about it like especially with a dog like that you're wrapping them up in cotton wool because you know they have the potential to win a derby you know what they can do so you have to mind them and and treat them like babies and I mean, if I had a dog like that, every time I'd be putting him on the gallop, I'd be going, oh, Jesus, please don't break out. And do you know what I mean? Like, if, I'd be a nervous wreck having a dog like that. I really would. So kudos to Michael O'Donovan. I think, as Damo likes to call him, God. Um, you can see why. There but we are now, Tommy. Get, let's wait till he wins the derby and still be Let, starting let's, from God. From now on, let's send our superstars to Michael O'Donovan, not to Sarah, okay? <laughs> yeah, don't, no, don't give me any superstars. I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> uh, Sarah, on to Heat 15. Ben's Teddy. Um... 29.31, matching the clock of Kulavani Hoffa. He was yeah. a little bit behind him to the third bend, but from the third bend, he came home in 12.07, which as far as I can see is as fast as we've seen, certainly from the leaders at the third bend home. He's just an absolute powerhouse. He won't always get to the front early, but as you mentioned earlier on, Rahamofo came away too well. She found herself surrounded by big dogs in the corner, had to sort of mind destroyed, and all of a sudden she's in a struggle to qualify. She did so there's better to come from her, no question about that. Tommy Shewick again ran a big race in defeat, but Ben's Teddy on the bunny, forget about it. Yeah, who's that to me or Tommy? To you, Sarah. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was excellent. Um, God, I actually must mention, and I know Tommy, you're in a rush to go, but um, Sarah Buckley broke her foot on Saturday night when she was parading this dog or one of their other runners. I think it was this one. So. I wish she was speedy recovery, Sarah. She tripped over when she was um, parading the dog, I think, and broke her foot. So I hope she's okay. But this was an excellent performance uh, by Ben's Teddy. Um, I actually tipped Raha Mofo in the race, but I thought Ben's Teddy just blew me away. I didn't expect that from him whatsoever. Led from the first, drew clear, one by six lengths. Delighted for Tommy's Ewick. And it's great, guys. I know I always blab on about social media, but social media is so crucial to our industry anyway. Um, Shark Hannon and, and their Twitter crew, they put up stuff about this dog every week and they tag Boyles and they tag Shelburne and they tag myself. And it's great to see them getting behind. Um, social media is such a massive part of our game. So it's wonderful to see the lads. Like we all see the connections, horse racing and greyhound racing go hand in hand, as we know, or hoof and paw, if you want to be like that better. But um, <laughs> it's, it is wonderful to see them getting behind uh, the dog. And there's a, a big, massive support network there. 
And same for Raha Mofo and the connections in Galway. We were myself and George McDonough were talking up this bitch all week on Galway Bay. Um, because I think the the cousin or the brother, the, the boxer, he had won his match. Um Aaron, yeah. Friday, Aaron. I think it was. Yeah, he's a, he's a, so, yeah, again, he's, like now, his... he's now six and oh or seven and oh as a professional and um, looks to have a, a very, very bright future. And um, yeah, we've yeah. actually seen the knockout. You didn't because his hand speed was that quick. You just couldn't even see the, the blow. But um, yeah, getting back to it, Sarah, enough tangents from you. Uh, sorry, sorry. Ben's Teddy, very impressive. Yeah, excellent, excellent. All three of them, all three qualifiers were excellent. I think Bud Sports Vic came off a little sore after the race, so I hope he's okay as well. And it's great that the English connections came over of Brookside, Richie, and hope they got home okay and all that. So it's, it, we love to see them come over and take them part. That's the main thing. We wish there was more of them, of course. Um, but yeah, an excellent heat uh, in. Tommy, Ben's Teddy is a dog we've spoken of plenty of before. The engine's always been there. We know exactly how fast he was. It was just refreshing to see him get off the front down again. And if look, they fancy him to win it to win it, Kirby, and he went a long way. He um he hadn't run since the, the first round of the national produce stakes prior to round one, and I thought he ran a good race that day. Uh, having having the top two vacant the other night is, it was 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 important to him. He just lacked that bit of early pace, so we knew he had the ability to do twenty nine thirty. There's no you know that that's long been evident. He's quite experienced for you know for quite some time. He got a, a nice bit of racing when he was when he was very young. Um. Yeah, I, I, you know, again, he's one of those, he's one of those dogs that can, that, that can probably sneak into a qualifying position all the way. There'll be a lot of heat, so you won't fancy him to win it, mm. and and you won't fall down if he does because the ability's there. But I think it, it, the connection will be happy that he could just sneak into qualifying positions, not not worrying about whether he wins heats or not. Rahamofa was kind of a little bit fortunate to get up on the line, but that's their her ability, um, to get up on the line for third place. He only just touched off Boyle Sports Vic, um, you know, I, I. Connections won't give a damn about that in terms of once she's out, comes off, came off okay the other night. It, it, it makes no difference that, that that happened because that's the type of bitch she is. She can miss it or she can miss and get trouble. She can she, she broke too well and get and, and got herself into trouble by not being able to get to the bend. I think we actually saw that in the early round of the Oaks last year. I remember when she when she she did something similar and kind of mm-hmm. checked going into the first bend and, and ran a remarkable race before going on to win the Oaks. So um she's 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 not like she's not a likely derby winner. But she's a potential derby finalist. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Tommy, having left the money behind him, um, last week with Halo being heavily back down to thirteen to eight favoritism, he popped out the other evening and is returned to considerably bigger price, which would suggest they didn't they didn't back up their <laughs> their bets. Um, returned nine to one the other evening. That's that's just. Is there anything worse? Is there anything worse? You back one one week, you know, back at the following week, it wins at nine to one. Um, Hawkfield Blue came to challenge about six times, and every time he just closed the door, and then Hawkfield Blue switched sides on the run in. He holds on by a short head. This was all about early speed. It, it really was actually in fairness to to to, to keep uh, Halfway at Blue at Bay, you know, early was was sure. a fair performance. Um, look, I don't think there was a Derby winner in the heat, but I thought Halo ran well. Yeah, you'd be absolutely, absolutely be disgusted <laughs> you know, if you if you try to land the gamble in round one, thinking this is the soft round. Now let's get it here t- today, lads, and then it goes and wins a nine to one the second round. You would have had a bit of a sweat, all right, but Callaway Masters is a decent dog, in, in, but not not again, you know, at the level of winning the Derby back in third. Yeah, anything to add, Sarah? No, no. Um, I thought it was um another good performance on the night. Um, I had tipped Hawkfield Blue, and when I seen the two of them go neck and neck, because because the two of them aren't very strong stayers, really, are they? So, I I didn't know what was going to happen, but um, I think it's least... safe to say I think it's safe to say after Saturday night, Hawkfield is a stronger stayer. But just when you don't get your run, you don't get your run, isn't that it? Well, I would have put him down more of a better sprinter than a five fifty dog, really, but. Look, it was a very good performance. I said, I'm telling you, that Matthew Hart guy is a dark, dark horse, that fella. Keep an eye on him. And it's great to see these younger trainers coming through as well. So more luck to him. Yeah, move on. Uh, to the draw for the next round, folks, we have... Uh... We have some great clashes to look forward to. The opening, he sees the likes of Sober Glory and Bobsleigh Dream lining up against each other on the inside. Music glide away, Tommy Sewick on the outside. Any quick thoughts, Sarah? Um... Of the heat button. Um, sorry, what did you say to me there? I wasn't just sorry. just the opening heat, the opening heat of the third round. Um, sober glory, Bobsleigh dream, maybe music, light away, Tommy Shuey. Get imagine stories, cash in, sporty big man, it'd be big prices. 
Bobsleigh Dream is six to four to win that heat. Uh, Sober Glory and Trap One six to four. Oh God, who am I going to go for that in that race? Um, that's I a would. Have, that's a toss uh, of a coin, is it? It really is. I would have, and I'm. I sentimentally, I'd be going for Trap Two, but the way Sober Glory is, I'll go with Sober Glory six to four. Trap One. Tommy. Absolutely, you have to match Bob's Dream at six to four. Great draw, three three cash out wouldn't be it wouldn't be a big early pace. Or sport the big man's not an early pace. Or moves good light away can go up with this company because there's not a lot of early pace in it. Uh, Tommy Shuba could go up reasonably well, but it'll be on the outside. Bob's Dream gets a run that wins. Easy yeah. peasy, Tommy. I love it. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to bet the winning distance to be less than the length. Uh, on to the second heat. Uh, the laddie da, folks, has got trap one, but he's going to need to use it because he's got Ben's Teddy, Clonroe, Sydney, Undisputed, Another Holiday. I think Another Holiday may reverse form with Undisputed from the draw, um, but you know that's yet to be seen. Clonroe's Teddy will edge inwards, probably doesn't have the early to challenge. Um, Ben's Teddy will be looking for a passage around the opening two Ben's. I'm going to go for the laddie da. Sarah, what about yourself? That's a savage heat. Um, I'm going to go with, yeah, one. Trap one. da 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 Tommy. No, I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm not going to go with trap one purely for the sake that if the three of a tip it, it sounds like it's a, it's a strong, it's a strong fancy in that heat. It really isn't. That's a wide open heat. Yeah, he's he's Thank around. The, I think he's around the two to one mark. Is he? Yeah, he's two to one presently. Two to one, like yeah. it's three. To, yeah, it's three to one each of two. Then to Ben's Teddy and another holiday four to one undisputed. Um. I think Ben's Teddy is overreaction to his one the last night. He'll be at best fourth into the opening corner. Obviously, he can win from off the pace, but I think that might be a touch of an overreaction. On to heat three. Um, the one too short to favour as well. Yeah, if he traps, it's not though, is it? Another holiday had one from trap five. I think in the in the juvenile, didn't he? Uh, he, 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 he he trap five won't be an issue to him at yeah, all. Yeah. Like he's definitely a trap four See, runner anyway. <clears throat> if you give me the two to one after five yards, I'll see if I want to take it. That's fair enough. I I, I wouldn't mind a bit either. Uh, if they do offer, Tommy, give take a bit for me, right? Uh, <laughs> you can have it, yeah. On to heat three. Uh, tricky enough little heat this. Much will Ooh. depend on whether Mr. Chelm can start from trap four, but that is probably where he wants to be. Trinity Junior in five is the likely favourite still, just given the fact that Bally McWall disappointed somewhat the other night. He's out in six. Tough little contest. Hawkfield Blue we can go up well up the inside, but I think the market will certainly suggest it'll be one of the outside three that'll win, Tommy. Yeah, look, if I had to pick one of them now, and again, I'm, I'm not gonna, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, um, like you'd, you'd like to see Mr. Chelm actually win a race, um, yeah. which would be just just for the confidence of it, of knowing that the dog is capable of doing it right and doing winning races at the moment. Obviously, the pace is still there. I would slightly favor him, Trinity Jr. I just have a big question mark after the other night. Maybe it's nothing, maybe I'm reading too much into it. I'm just have a question mark, Bally McWall, obvious question mark. So, Kildare, if he got a run early, uh, his, his back straight pace is ridiculous, and if, I think if, this if, is the type of <laughs> If he does something in the three forties, he gets first run. If he gets first run, goodbye, good night, good luck. Yeah. It's all over. <laughs> Sarah, um, it's a it's a it's a tricky one because I think Hawkfield Blue would set the pace, um, and I think he'll be chased down. Bally MacWalt after last week's before. No, do you know what? I'm going to give him a second chance. I'm going to go for Bally MacWalt to trap six. Good woman. On to heat four. I'm going to speak for all three of us. We're tipping up Kula Vani Hoffa. Any uh, any ob- any any objections? Let's let's do the betting without. Who would you do betting without? Bacos, obviously. Uh, to, to be honest, no, it doesn't interest me. I'm just going to be watching Kula Vedi Hoffa. The 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 Bacos obviously is 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 an interesting one to say, Sarah, because because in a race where where you're a, a, a bitch like her is going to be dominated early by Kula Vedi Hoffa's early pace. It, it sets it leaves it open to something else that 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 can you know get a run at her because she's not she's yeah. going to be held up to some degree to some little degree whatever that is and that might be enough for something to give her to get a run at her Capitan Garfio who wasn't as strong as the stairs has the early pace to go up and down the inside of Bacchus Crystal just could be interesting for her might actually might actually fall in favour of Callaway Masters getting second possibly I, yeah I think he wants in I I think I'd nearly yeah, favour he, no, he does beach. a bit he does <clears throat> he does yeah seven beats yeah. Just, okay, we'll move on to heat. We'll heat. move on to heat five. Um, an interesting heat again. Droopy's bro has got his draw on the inside. Glengar Martha's drawn in a two. How do you price her after last week? Um, you know, Milleridge Levy McNeil, Rahamofa will most likely be favoured. She will certainly be favoured. She is favoured, in fact. Five Burge Khalifa favorite, is yeah. on the outside. Burge Khalifa has got a good draw. Um, it all depends what Rahamofa does early. Tommy does it. Yeah, definitely. Um, she can run herself into trouble, or she can, or she can, she can have herself set to win to win well. Uh, it's not bad heat, 
but it's 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 a kind of it's kind of racy. We saw it on Saturday night. You saying really Raham Offa should be winning it. Burj Khalifa, I would respect quite a lot. You know, I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah Sarah. Um, Sarah. yeah, that's very tough because even if she misses the kick, she's a lot of work to do to come from behind. Some of them, there are a few powerhouses in there, so maybe she is better off. Do you know what? I'm gonna take a chance and I'll go with Glenn Garmath to back up her performance from last week. Seven to two, bit of value. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I, I like it's 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 the it's probably the value play. Um, her her you know the key to her success is getting across Drupi's bro early. If she does, yeah. big player. Yeah, he's six Scaglietti's in one, Bally Mac Marino's in three. Then you'll have probably Halo going up fast from four, Undulation five, Jatara going up fast from six. It's an interesting contest, but does it boil down to the big two, Scaglietti and Bally Mac Marino, Sarah? No, it doesn't. This I think that all there's be there'd be so many of these heading into the first bend together. That's the way I look at this race. And I think there might be a little bit of traffic problems. And I think one will skip around on the inside at eleven to eight, Scaglietti for me. Uh Jatar is a fantastic price at nine to two. I know he's young. Undulation as well, you could argue is a terrific price of five to one. Bally McMarino could ping out. So could Halo after what he done last week, ten to one. That's a that's a really, really good heat. But just based on classiness, I'd have to go with Scaglietti. Actually, he spelt wrong there. I must message Dave O'Lanigan. Um, 11 to 8 favourite, yeah. Tommy. Sarah saying is the odds checkers made a balls of pricing up that heat. It's down at Scaglietti. Uh, no, 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 the, if, he, the price, if, he doesn't, if he doesn't win, it could be sadly Eddie for Sarah. Go on, yeah. Tommy. <laughs> um, I think I think they're perfectly fine with the prices. Scaglietti is the most likely winner. Bally Mac Marino though actually draws perfectly fine. I think it's a Bally, nice there's draw. more to come from Bally Mac Marino. It's 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 between the two, but the problem is if Scaglietti does a 29, 20 something runs, Bally Mac Marino won't come from behind it. Yeah. Um I think they're the obvious one too. Yeah, it's a watching brief for me, I have to admit. Um moving on to Heat Seven, Ballyhimic and Rex, Clona Duke, the other Colby, Well Met, Romana Dano and Ryaho Beach. I've already sort of nailed my colours to the mast in this one, where I think the other Colby will be a big price, and I think he's due a ping. Um for that reason, I'm just gonna side with him, but purely price basis. I think Clona Duke is, you know, the most likely winner. But again, this is quality pack, Tommy. Well, well if you think the other Colby might win. You've got to worry that Clona Duke might not qualify. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Draw. Yeah, he is very strong. That's the only thing I'll say about it. He's, he's really strong. flying he, he, from he, the third bend home. Yeah, yeah, but like to be honest about it, the draw could hardly be much better for for um for Ryho Beach, even if he doesn't fly out. If in terms of in terms of in terms of <clears> of a good heat, even if he doesn't fly out, you think that out the outside he'd have a chance to qualify. Jamal Dano has good early pace, but not the, not a mad strongest there. Out well met his brilliant early pace. Like this is if Tony Duke, if if the other Kobe pings, Tony Duke is in real trouble to qualify. And I think Ballyhimic and Rex is in superb form, absolutely brilliant form. I wouldn't rule him out. Um, just look at the prices very quickly: four to one, six to four, four to one, five twenty five, and seven to two. Yeah, I wouldn't back the bottom at seven to two, even though he has a squeak. Well met has the pace to lead, but won't stay there. Well. Right, hope could be last into the corner. That's my issue, and it's just a case of what he does then. Oh no, but potentially so. But if he is like one, two, three, four with the early pace, I know Dramana Dano has it too, but we shouldn't be getting in the way. Um, one, two, three, four around that bend. I think Clona Duke could be the the least early pace of those. Okay, Sarah. Yeah, you both make really good points. It's a tough one. Um. I again a bit like what I mentioned earlier on with Glen Martha, just for a bit of value, I'm gonna go for six. I love Clona Duke, but there's there's a lot of early there. I'll go for six. On to Heat Eight. Um and again, lots of you know likable types in this contest, some really talented performers. Romeo Magicals in one three six five, Hanover Phantom, Drupy's got it, Drupy's nice when Clon Brian Treaty. Clon Brian Treaty will be favours, and much will depend on how he starts. If he does start within a length of them. I think he'll go round in front and that probably will be enough. But the way Drupi's nice one is running, she has to be seen as a threat. Um, Romeo Magico is better drawn. Drupi's got it as due a run. 365 is hardly run, as running hard. So is Hanover Phantom. It's just one of those heats, Tommy, where it could throw up a bit of a result. Um, but I think Clombine Treaty is a worthy favourite. Yeah, down if I'd be back in the 10 to 11, I can tell you. Um, I don't like I don't, I don't that trust in the dog breaking. I know his pace is his early pace is phenomenal, and if you have to do it right, he would win. Um, but, but yeah, look to be honest about it, I can't I can't fancy the top, even though I know the, the, the Romeo Magic can win can still win Derby Heats. I can't fancy it in the sense of um when I know it's not 
at the very top of its game. Um, Tracy Five needs to improve. But Hanover Phantom is kind of is kind of a solid one paced greyhound. Drooby's got has got to prove that it's going to do that run, but you think it can? And Drooby's well, nice one. Who at, well, well, we, we, nice cert- one. we certainly know he can. It's just a case of he's, he's ready to do it. Like he has it on his card. Like he was a sensational runner. No, last oh, year. no, yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. But I'm saying like after a long layoff, he has to go yes, and do it. Yes, that's yes, the problem. Yes, that's yes. the problem. He has to go and yeah. do it after that. We saw him last year. Um, Drooby's nice one is probably I would say Drooby's nice one is. Definitely overpriced a four to one. She is she is she in each way still? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Sarah. Um, dare I say, I think Clambrine Treaty will win comfortably. Good woman. I like to hear that. Yeah. Put like a bit of confidence, confidence in yeah. it. Like the confidence. That's what we want to hear. Hope you're right. Hope Tommy's you're right. been circling. I'm Tommy was circling the drain there for about two minutes. Sarah just came in. <laughs> I think he wins comfortably. Lovely. That's, That's all nice. we needed. Right. Let's move on. It's a great derby. Um, nail your colours to the mask, Tommy. What'll win it? No, haven't a clue. Clone, cool if any Hoffa just wins, it's all over. Forget about it. Wrap it up. Barring bad luck, like which was which is the silly stuff that happened to him last year, last year, which is the freakish stuff yeah. that happened last year. Yeah. Barring bad luck, he wins. Unfortunately, not the night, the night, the night he went out, he did a three thirty nine to the opening, like to their opening split. It's if he does unreal, a three, if he does a three thirty nine, three thirty nine to be ten clear. <laughs> we certainly <laughs> six clear anyway. Um, Sarah, what wins it? You, you've been telling us all night you can't nail your colours to one. So we, we, I'll tell you what, have a minute. We'll talk about Dundalk first, but then we're coming back to you. All right. Okay. okay. Right. The Bar One Racing Irish Sprint Cup continued at Dundalk on Saturday night. Tommy, it's been a great little competition. Um, obviously, I have to write about it. So I, I've been keeping close eye on it. And one or two dogs that I've sort of liked through the competition have progressed. This Carrick Aldo won the opening. He's he's just getting better and better. Um, owned by Thomas Glynn, trained by David Murray. What was their dog that reached the final a few years back, Tommy? Brody's magic, I hope. Brody's magic. <laughs> Yes, indeedy. Well and done, Aldo, what a memory. Carrick Aldo has turned... Well, we've spoken that many times about Brody's magic yeah. over the years. <laughs> uh, Carrick Aldo is just coming forward and forward and forward every single night. He did 21 40 of the night in his semi-final. But it is worth <laughs> pointing out that in second was Who Have I for Michael J. O'Donovan and Curly's dog from Trap 1 ran a remarkable race. He didn't get a start. He flew to the corner, stumbled at the bend, looked like he was going out of the competition, recovered. He's beaten two and three quarter lengths in 21 4 I think he is a massively, massively fast greyhound, Tommy, whether he wins on Saturday night or Tuesday night, should I say. It's Tuesday week. Uh, I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing. If they went 25 to 1 about him to win the laurels now, I'd be backing him. Yeah, he, he um, he, yeah, just just that little bit of traps. But 6.99 the previous week, like, and then going to 7.11, which doesn't seem like a lot. Like, if you're going from, 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 340 to 350, I think that's not huge. So six in a sprint, 699 to 711 is monstrous. Um, actually, you know, Carrick Aldo came in on top of him a little bit and they kind of bumped a little bit. I seen them maybe f- caused that bit of trouble, maybe. Uh, like the, the winners are seriously fast, dog. Yeah, but they are they're, they're, they're doing around the three heats last week, dude. Sub 21 seconds, I think they might have done three of the three of the heats. And and Carrick Aldo was yeah. the slowest of them doing 21 seconds, yeah, exactly. Remarkable stuff. Who have I though? Why god, that that. To, to you think he's gone out of the competition coming out of the second bend because he's he's after going back and then he flew home again. Yeah, he's he's I'm more interested in him now for the Laurels than I am for the Sprint Cup. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sarah, like if if Shelburne's your second home, Dundalk is certainly third home. Um, you know it more than most when you're doing six ninety nine, you're running. Bloody sure, yeah, you you're running. <laughs> I'm telling you, I I love the the four hundred yards down in Dundalk. I I have to say though, I've never liked Trap One down there. Yeah, um, it's, it's, I, not, I, it's not the box you want. No, I've never liked it. Um, in any of the traps in Dundalk, I've never liked trap one. It's that it's just that sort of track, and it's a it's a brilliant track. I'm not slagging them or anything. I just don't like trap one down there. Um, who have I though? Look, this dog is is pretty special. Like you know what? I think the simple fact if he was drawn anywhere else, he would have won that. And um, I think it was the box that 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 uh, let him down. But look. That radical hero as well for obviously his it'd be his nephew, wouldn't it, Thomas O'Donovan? Yeah. Um, that's a fair old dog too. Like again, I I've tipped him a few times in Shelburne and, and different places, and he's let me down. But he's always there or thereabouts, and he's in all these big competitions. So he's obviously very talented. I just never would have thought. I never thought I'd see him in a a sprint final. If I'm being honest, I would have more thought he was more five two five five fifty. But there you go. Um, yeah, Caracaldo. Um. 2104, like, 
when you're looking at this competition, like that dog, I think I had a runner the night he ran um, one of the nights in, in May and he done, I think it was 2140 or something like that. And I seen him in the flesh and I says to myself, there's a dog for the sprint and there you are now he's in the final. I should have bloody backed him, but I'm not sure what price he was anti-post. But um, I love this competition and I think they're all worthy favourites. I was disappointed to see Crafty Bonanza go out though because obviously Martin Lanny has a, a great tradition with this race with Johnny Scatillo and um, he's done a remarkable job with that Crafty Bonanza as well because he goes to Shelburne and he, he wins over 525 and 550 and then comes back to Dundalk and was able to do 2120 and winning and then he, he was second in the other round and he done 2107 which I think is a career best I don't think he's actually um capable of doing 2107 winning but obviously when these dogs are doing these big times and you're finishing second it makes you look better it happened to us there last week we had a, a bitch brewer's best and uh, it was an S7 and it was won in 2126 and we're finishing second now doing 2177 let me tell you she wouldn't do 2177 so you we, we're on a tangent again here Sarah these things can <laughs> make you look better but anyway I think yeah I was disappointed to see him grow but uh, and get it right as well that was another disappointment um very well bred new and Taylor no recollection but yeah an excellent performance from Caracal will he win it I don't think so yeah get it Sarah, right, Sarah makes you look like a mutant. I know, yeah. Car- uh, get it right, sadly, a non-runner. <laughs> it, it's a real shame because he he, he looks a, a potential star, no question about yeah. it. On to the second heat, uh, Raph down Molly. I, I don't know whether to start with Sarah or not. We have to finish this now by lunchtime, right? <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Raph down Molly, she's been a star for such a, such a long time. I have to say a big hello to, to Bill Mulholland watching from home. He always watches. And this is the apple of his eye, Raph down Molly. Um, yeah. It just happened for her again the other night. She's really taken to this 400-yard trip. She didn't show in front until probably 15 strides into the race. And then just quickly, in a matter of 15 yards, put the race beyond the, the reach of her rivals, Ratha and Molly. She wins in 2099. She's in trap three in the final, just where they want to be. She's obviously a huge player at Chelm Skippy, running well in second spot. He's a bit of a an enigma, this fellow. Um, he stays very wide. He has all sorts of paces. And Ballymac Samuel qualifying in third. Didn't happen for Road Exile. The favourite missed the kick and found crowding on the opening corner. But Ratha and Molly Sarah, she's been a star for a long time. She has. She was second in a goal cup. In, in Shelburne Park. She's extremely talented and Skippy and Mary Asha, look, they're great people with dogs and they absolutely think the world of her. I think the world of her. I'm always raving about her in my column every week whenever she's running. I tip her as much as I can. She's got terrific early pace. Um, So yeah, I, I really hope they win it. I really do because we all know Mary and Skip down through the years and they deserve to have that big win. I think it, it's a long time coming. Um, but yeah, the others in the race didn't look. They're 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 all deserving um finalists. Don't get me wrong, but I was disappointed to see Road Exile go out, um, because that would have been one of my anti post picks. Um, the night of the international, Pat Buckley's dog, he absolutely blasted his rival. I think he broke twenty one seconds that night as well. But um, yeah, look, right down, Molly. What more can you say? I won't blab on because I can. Do you know what? We should do a podcast because you can blab on in podcasts. You, you can't, can but no one will listen. Like... They'll, they'll tune off. <laughs> Tommy, Tommy Rathdale and Molly, yeah, she's been there. She's danced every dance. She's just a model of consistency with tremendous early speed and suits this 400 yards. Funny, actually, maybe it's only from watching the video, but it looks like she was almost stumbling around the first bend, and yet she was going away from them the other day. Just the way, she, maybe the way yeah, she gallops. That fast. Um, or maybe, yeah, maybe it's the, maybe it's the video. Um, She's in superb form. She's on the right side of who have I? I don't know if that's going to be enough. I mean, I think I think boys have priced six to four, seven to four. Mm-hmm. It is that tight. I slightly favour who have I. I just think it's a bit is a bit stronger, and it might just be enough. But it's going to be a cracking contest, and it's going to be one in probably twenty twenty eighty something. It's going to take a take a huge run to win it. Yeah, and I think I, I think there's only two of them probably capable of doing that. That are are the middle two, um, Rathdale and Molly and, and who have I? Uh, Carrick Aldo is definitely going the right way, but he's 21 seconds, 21 or four the last two nights, doing everything right. So you know he, he's one for the future, but I, I think it'll come down to the big two uh, again. I'd be favouring who have I over Rathdale and Molly just purely from the fact that he's switching out from trap one to four. I, I think four would be okay for him, um, and if he does trap on terms. I'm not sure there's too many in the in the country that could contain him over 400 yards. Um, he's 
exceptionally fast and he had only one sprint prior to this competition so you know it goes to show that you know, sometimes sprinting is just made for certain greyhounds and, and this fellow certainly yeah. suited by the the unique 400 yard trip shall we say at Dundalk ladies do, and gentlemen that's have, it oh, sorry, go ahead sir say, do they have a bit of a break now until the final Yep, it's on Tuesday week, August 15th, traditional date. Uh, it should be a great night up in Dundalk. And best of luck to everyone concerned. Um, load of good racing advertised for that night. Hope all those opens fill. And it should be a, a tremendous, tremendous night at Dundalk. Well worth the visit. And a Tuesday night, it means I can go. I'm definitely going. It's gonna I be might a, even have a runner. Good, good woman, Sarah. Good woman. Have a runner. Bre- uh, Brewer, is it? Brewer's best, yeah. Brewer's best. Is the Ballymac best? It is, yeah, and she's oh, yeah. she's crazy. I'll tell you that she's she's bloody crazy. I think like her owner, like her owner, Sarah. We gave you a few minutes. What's going to win the derby? I'm going to put up an each race selection. Bobsleigh dream. Bobsleigh dream. Bobsleigh dream. Yeah, I think I don't think anyone. I don't think anyone would argue against the each way part of that, Tommy. Um, we haven't mentioned the match race. There was a match race at Shelburne Park on oh, Saturday yeah. night. Tommy, what are your thoughts on match races? Um, when they like that, I like them. Actually, Sarah and I spoke about it in Galway last week, and I changed my mind after. I was just talking. I was I I kind of thought the the wine tavern would get um, Jack Tavern would get first run, but actually, <clears throat> when I watched the replay, it's, it's kind of when you get to when you get to match races, you have a you have a, a normally slow start that can just be a little bit closer than expected. Yeah. So. Um, I actually thought it was a cracking race. I have to be honest, but I have no problem with it whatsoever. There can be good betting heats too, depending if, on obviously if, if they're well if they're well yeah. if they're this, well matched. This was a well constructed match race. They can be a damn yes. squib, they can be an absolute pain. Yeah. And if I had a very like a real top class grain with potential stud um sort of aspirations, the last thing I would be doing is putting them over in a match race because you're leaving yourself open. But in this case, two bitches, two stars over 750 yards. I thought it was just the perfect match race. You knew how it was shaped. One going to the front, one be staying yeah. on strongly. My exact words to Noel Byrne, Larry O'Shea on the Friday evening. Maybe it was the third. No, it was the Friday evening. The owners of Jack Denver Bella. I walked in and I turned to them. I said, of all the bitches to take on over 750 yards, are you mad taking on Bally McCasey in the two dog affair? I said, lads, I have to tell you, I'll be tipping up Bally McCasey. And they sort of said, yeah, well, we're supposed to take on Kinturk Row, but that didn't happen. So uh, as it was, it was Bally McCasey. And I think both of them have, yeah, Jack Tavern Bella won't be racing much longer. I would say this is her last year potentially her last race could be at the Winter Racing Festival, but she's been some star for them this year. The sport they've had has been unbelievable. And Sarah, there was a good atmosphere. There was plenty of people talking about the match race. I suppose that's the beauty of them. They do add a little bit, something different. Of course they do. Yeah, I know the English are massive fans of them. Um, it's great to see now Shelburne Park. Do. I hope they do on Derby final night. You never know. They might have plans to do on that night. It's interesting what you said about though, like if you had any side of um, aspirations for stud, it's different for dogs and bitches, isn't it? Like two bitches, it doesn't really matter. But when it's two dogs, you'd be thinking, oh, who wouldn't go to him at stud now after that? But you would never say that about a bitch. So it is an interesting point to make. Um, and I do agree with you. Um, if I had a dog if planning to go for stud, I wouldn't put, put him in a match race, that's for sure. But I like the way they, they called it the Dublin v. Kerry and it got a bit of crack going. We were all up in the bird's nest. Um, Self and Damien were up with you, watching it up there. Great to see you doing your thing as well, Ian. I love watching you actually live in person. <laughs> you're brilliant. Well, live. you know you're brilliant. I don't and need to make Tommy, your head Tommy, and it's live. Yeah, it's I'm live. Done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> you heard it there, folks. Tommy, yeah. have you ever done commentating? Just in every, he was doing it in y'all last night. Were you? I'm very proud of you. I'm doing it for the last now. four years. Doing it for the last ten years, I'd say. Glad to see you're paying attention to. Her. Yeah, I know. She, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah keeps on top of the greyhound racing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought it was someone else. I was like, I was listening, going, "That sounds familiar. Sounds Come like here. a porn star voice." Is it oh. me or does Tommy look a bit like to- uh, Steve Jobs today? All he's short though is the little glasses. He'd be away oh, in a hack. You actually, Tommy? Yeah, <laughs> it's like um, a serial yeah. killer. Right, kind of- we're losing. We're definitely going off on a tangent here. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's it. Good luck, good night, God bless. Listen, folks, we've had a a wonderful start to the derby. We are down to the final 48. All of a sudden, we're going to be down to the last 24. It's, well, certainly worth your while tuning in. If you can get to the Shelburne Park on Saturday night, it is well worth seeing these greyhounds in the flesh. They are something special to see.
That's it, though, from us on this Tuesday evening. We'll be back next Monday. And, of course, Shelburne Park, Saturday night, the place to be. We'll see you there. Good luck. Good evening. God bless. 